This is our Southern Pacific passenger mail train in a 1956 setting. These two Jeep 9s were once on the Texas and New Orleans subsidiary of the SP, and they were transferred west to the Bay Area, and these large oscillating barrel Mars lights were added. Our layout is 1956, so actually these GP 9s are here a few years too early. We'll talk more about LED lighting later on. These are early lifelike Proto 2000 models and they run very well. These models came with the orange and silver wings on both ends, indicating that they have control cabs facing both directions. They also had steam boilers to support passenger operations. These Jeeps have been equipped with Loxound DCC controllers and the barrel lights were added since the model only had more generic lights. This layout has maybe a thousand LEDs in buildings, stores, passenger cars, and industrial areas. LEDs use about one-fifth of the current, the same light output, and are cool to the touch compared to incandescent bulbs of the same rating. All of these are run at a fraction of their rated output or they would be far too intense. They are extremely efficient. And here are a number of LEDs in these townside scenes. In my early modeling days, only grain of wheat tiny bulbs were available. They were chronically failing and tended to heat up any plastic they touched. They were very sensitive to any overcurrent, failing almost immediately. The first LEDs were only in red from around the early 1970s. It took decades before affordable warm white LEDs were available. Small point-and-shoot cameras improved in the last few years with good low-light video sensitivity with low noise. Now I use a Sony pocket camera that makes all of this possible in low light. It can fit in a gondola sideways, such as when this industrial area scene was shot. Most of the LEDs here are warm white. This factory has cool white LEDs with a blue shift to simulate fluorescent lights used in some factories even back in the 50s. Here's a package with the Details West headlight. It's a soft metal casting and it needs hollowing out with a ball grinder to better fit the LED behind the MV lens. I harvested hundreds of warm white LEDs from these IKEA light strips that were on sale for about $6 each and each strip had about 35 LEDs to unsolder and make use of. This train has a Sunset Models Harriman style railway post office or RPO car, followed by an upgraded roundhouse baggage car. Then an old rebuilt brass Ken Kidder RPO car is followed by a pair of Sunset Models Harriman chair cars. The last car is a longer chair car made from an old Walther's wood and metal kit, very common in the 1950s. All of these cars have LED lighting. The Walthers, Kinkitter, and Roundhouse cars have new Walthers heavyweight trucks with pickups for wiring lights, including a tailgate red warning light. The sun is up now, and this is a good place for a review run by. Don't miss our previews of SP videos on DVDs that make perfect modeling reference guides as well as nostalgic entertainment. We offer around a dozen DVD videos that focus just on the SP over the various decades. This SP by the Bay DVD focuses on passenger and freight in the San Francisco Bay Area long ago. Steam and diesel are featured.
SP by the Bay is a detailed look at the San Francisco Bay Area's SP operations during the 1967 to 1997 period. Diesel power on the SP begins with the steam to diesel transition era and it ends in the 1970s with just about every SP diesel they ever owned covered. We cover the beautiful Alco PAs and the EMDF unit fleet through the 50s and into the 60s as passenger travel would bring more red ink to SP's books. We also cover the graceful dual-motored E-units in great locations, such as Santa Barbara, California, where crews were changed. Several old rare views of special FAMO units of Alco and others show up in rare views as well as some great road power scenes. Baldwin was a well-liked early supplier and we feature some of their models. And we also take a visit to Old Taylor Yard, doomed by the revitalization of SP's physical plant. The hump yard brings some great action with a variety of power, long removed from the system. Out on the road, we cover many locations out west with monster lash-ups of power and with correct sound synchronization accurately matched to locomotive types. SP Vintage West brings more scenes from that era. Whether you're a modeler or you just miss the SP, this is a great reference and entertaining DVD of things you can no longer see. Our passenger train coverage features mail trains and the San Joaquin Daylight, all the way to its demise in 1971. Thanks for watching.